let freedom ring. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Patriot Radio at its best. You're listening to The Sound of Freedom with your host, Ryan Brooks. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Sound of Freedom live on this Thursday, November 15th, 2012 edition. This is the Orion Talk Radio Network, and I am your host, Ryan Brooks. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot to talk about, as always. But before we get into tonight's show, I just want to quickly read something by a man named Edward Britton. And it's going to kind of go along with the concept of tonight's broadcast. Get your pen and papers out, folks, because we're going to get philosophical tonight, okay? The title of this little excerpt is called Who Owns You? Underlying every aspect of human interaction is a simple, single question. Who owns you? Everything you've ever been told or taught about religion, sociology, and political science attempts to answer that question. Religion says God owns you. Political science and sociology insist that the state or the group own you. If you don't trust government or those who ally themselves with various political or religious ideologies, chances are excellent that you have concluded that you own yourself. If you act on or otherwise voice that conclusion, be warned that you're likely to catch a bunch of crap from all directions. How dare you be so arrogant as to declare that you own yourself when all of the rest of the world is sending you contradictory information, that he, she, it, or they own you? Nevertheless, consider likewise that underlying every definition of the word own as it is used as a verb is a single characteristic, and that characteristic is control who or what controls you and to the degree that you answer is anyone or anything other than yourself can you truly claim that you own yourself if control is the one characteristic common to all the myriad means of describing the concept of ownership can you truly own yourself if someone or some entity exercises ultimate control of your life or how you live it how about your property Is your property not as much an extension of yourself, your life, and your life's efforts as are the wrinkles on your face, your fingerprints, or the color of your eyes? In whatever city, county, state, or country in which you now reside, do you have the ultimate right to do with your property, including yourself, as you see fit, providing that you do not interfere with the rights of others? If you do not, then how can you say that you truly own anything, much less your own life? Again, I ask, who owns you? Does it matter to you if you come to the realization that you do not or no longer own yourself? If it does, what do you propose to do about the situation? Once again, that's a little excerpt entitled, Who Owns You? by Edward Britton. Now, I wanted to bring that up tonight just as the intro to the show because there's a lot going on. And there's a lot of hype today. I mean, wow. Wow. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit up here tonight and I'm not going to cry and tell sad stories about my daughter and her future and how I'd be ashamed of myself if I didn't fight right now to save her. Uh, I'm not going to play Whitney Houston singing the national anthem and sing along with it to evoke nationalism, patriotism to get you to blindly follow me. I'm not going to fear monger. I'm not going to rant. I'm not going to uh, start quoting the Bible and start telling you to repent or anything like that because of what's going on. I'm not going to declare that we need a second American revolution. You want the second American revolution? Look in the mirror. Okay? And I want to quote George Washington real quickly. All right? George Washington said this in 1778. No punishment, in my opinion, is too great for the man who can build his greatness upon his country's ruin i've only been doing radio for a few months and the sound of freedom went from being a little tiny goofball show uh, over the summer to now reaching out to thousands upon thousands of people every day on oriontalkradio.com all the listeners out there in new york state 1650 a.m all the listeners who are listening to us from oriontalkradio.com and i've learned so much philosophically i've learned tricks with radio thanks to tim watts the man behind the scenes pulling all the strings making sure that you guys can hear this radio uh showing me tips and tricks you know he's been around for 40 years in the radio industry so he's helped me kind of bring my style together but i've also learned a lot about what i represent who i am and what am i talking about 
And ultimately, what it comes down to is that, and I've said this before, if we look at other alternative media, we look at people who are, who are out there pointing at the finger and saying, look, we have problems, look, we have problems, and they're playing on your emotional, irrational mind, the emotional, irrational side of your mind, saying, you know, just trying to evoke fear, anger, depression, sadness. They're playing with your mind just like a mainstream media person would. That doesn't do any good. Okay. Now, if I, I can only imagine what would have happened if I realized that I should be doing something like this 10 years ago. Now, that would have been I was only 17, so I don't know how many people listen to a 17-year-old kid. But, hey, if I was talking about the stuff I'm talking about today, especially 10 years ago, I, I don't know. <laughs> but, anyway, what I'm saying is if I had been around for 10 years, 20 years, I've only been around for maybe a year as far as actively speaking out, doing everything I can to help my fellow citizens realize what's going on. But I've learned so much, and I've realized that this is an individual revolution of the mind. This is up to you. This is up to me. This is up to everyone individually. We cannot solve the problem with the same consciousness that created the problem. Remember that Albert Einstein quote? You can't solve the problem with the same consciousness that created it. You must see the world anew. So how can you solve war with more war? How can you solve debt with more debt? And how can you solve collectivism, a collectivist problem, with more collectivism? It's a good question, isn't it, folks? Now, Ron Paul's speech, phenomenal. I see Moonline in the chat bringing it up. I wanted to play the whole thing last night, but it's 48 minutes long. And uh, we didn't have time, but I am going to read an interesting article from ABC News about it. The headline is, Ron Paul says, the Constitution has failed us. Do you see how they kind of paint him as being a bad guy right off the bat? But I'm going to read that article, read some excerpts out of it. It is a speech, in my opinion, that will live on in history. I mean, just an, a phenomenal speech. But the point is, we can't solve this problem working inside the system. Occupying Wall Street, the Tea Party, Campaign for Liberty... All of that got so close, right? They got so close to getting something done, right? And then nothing happened. You cannot give your time, energy, money, and all of that, your vote. <laughs> you can't do that for a group that's going to fight within the system. You can't solve collectivism with more collectivism. You have to see the world anew. We will have an American revolution in this country, but it will not be exactly like 1776. The game is different now, okay? And if you want to sing the national anthem and pound your chest and say, don't tread on me and put on your American flag T-shirt and run around with your rifle and tell people to secede, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Now, I've almost ranted the entire first segment, but tonight's broadcast... We will talk about Ron Paul for a little bit. We've got massive rioting going on in Spain. You want a little preview of what's coming to America in all seriousness? We will cover that briefly. We have daily sheeple news, Black Friday already being felt across the land. We're going to get into the White House petitions, and I'm going to spend a lot of time tonight uh, be, just because of the, 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 the fervor that I've seen and, and the, the people. I mean, this is getting big. And, of course, big people in the alternative media are just going buck wild, just... Uh, we need to do this right now. Ron Paul needs to write another uh, constitution, and this is the second American Revolution. I can feel it in my bones. The spirit of 1776 is strong, and God is telling me. I mean, that, that's just a joke to me, folks. And I can only imagine where I was a year ago as far as my evolution, the way I was looking at things, waking up. A year ago, if I would have heard that stuff, I would have felt fallen for it right then and there. But remember, they want us to be divided so they can conquer us. They want us to be divided so they can conquer us. So if that would have been me a year ago, I would have been calling my family. We need to petition right now. We need to secede right now. You need to sign that petition. And my family probably wouldn't want to do it, and then I'd be all butthurt at them. It's just an example, okay? But we're going to really get into that, this whole secession thing. And what is collectivism versus individualism? What is it? And why is this secession thing a hoax? It's going to be one heck of a ride, folks. My name is Ryan Brooks. I'll be driving the car. I hope you stay along for the ride. This is the Sound of Freedom, Ryan Talk Radio, three-minute break. We're going to be right back.
going to get into this big discussion about the secession thing. That's going to be the meat and potatoes of tonight's broadcast. But very quickly, I just want to cover a couple of uh, happenings in the news. The first one here is just a little preview of what's going to happen in America when the dollar dies. Okay, this is out of the Investment Watch blog. Massive riots hit Madrid, Spain, as banks, KFCs, McDonald's set ablaze Molotov cocktails used against police. Uh, one on the uh, ground reporter is reporting, quote, I've been there an hour ago, an explosion, smoke, people running and screaming, Molotov cocktails, police and riots were occurring in Madrid center. Over 140 people have been arrested and 74 injured, including 43 police officers as Spanish police react swiftly to reports of property damage and disorderly behavior while mass protests that began in Spain continue to roll out across the European Union. A wave of anti-austerity anger is sweeping across Europe as Spain and Portugal are undergoing general strikes, whereas Greece and Italy are seeing many walkouts. So that's just something to keep an eye on, folks. You know, once the euro goes, you know it's next in line, right? Yeah, the dollar. All right, so now we're going to cover this Ron Paul article here. Uh, there's a lot of coverage about this. The mainstream media is having a field day with it. But I thought it was interesting. ABC News reported Ron Paul departs with, quote, our Constitution has failed. See how they immediately paint him in a negative light? The article goes on to say that Representative Ron Paul, the iconic libertarian congressman from Texas, has delivered what will most likely be his final address to the Congress. In a sprawling 52-minute speech, it's actually 48, but hey, who's counting ABC? 48-minute speech to the House chamber, Paul lambasted U.S. government, politicians, and special interests, declaring that the United States people must return to virtue before the government allows them to be free, and that the Constitution has failed to limit the scope of an authoritarian bureaucracy. Our Constitution, which was intended to limit government power and abuse, has failed, Ron Paul said. The founders warned that a free society depends on a virtuous and moral people. The current crisis reflects that their concerns were justified. For the retiring Republican, 77, the current crisis isn't quite what it is for other members of Congress, who routinely use that word to describe the economic recession that followed the 2008 financial crash. To the Texas Republican, that's part of it. But the causes are deeper, and it's also a crisis of governmental authoritarianism and the vanishing of personal liberty. If it's not accepted that big government, fiat money, ignoring liberty, central economic planning, welfareism, and warfareism caused our crisis, we can expect a continuous and dangerous march toward corporatism and even fascism with even more loss of liberties, said Dr. Paul. The problem isn't just government size, but its use of force, both in starting preemptive wars and as it coerces U.S. citizens with police power. To Paul... This is the fault of the Americans who no longer prioritize liberty, and it will lead to the unraveling of orderly society unless people change. Restraining aggressive behavior is one thing, but legalizing a government monopoly for initiating aggression can only lead to exhausting liberty associated with chaos, anger, and the breakdown of civil society, Paul said. We now have a standing army of armed bureaucrats in the TSA, CIA, FBI, Fish and Wildlife, FEMA, IRS, and Corps of Engineers, etc., numbering over 100,000 civil society. More than coercive, to Paul, the government is also corrupt. Corrupt, excuse me. <clears throat> All branches of our government today are controlled by individuals who use their power to undermine liberty and enhance the welfare, warfare state, and frequently their own wealth and power, he said. Listen up, America. I'm going to say that one more time. All branches of our government today are controlled by individuals who use their power to undermine liberty and enhance the welfare, warfare state, and frequently their own wealth and power. Throughout his speech, Paul questioned not only the fundamental health of America's social compact, but specifics like fiat money, the power of the Federal Reserve, the Patriot Act, Foreign Intelligence Service Act modifications, undeclared wars, the illegalization of medical marijuana, mandatory sentencing requirements for drug crimes, the illegalization of hemp, 
TSA searches, federal debt and borrowing, the White House's authority to assassinate those it declares terrorists, the legalization of detaining U.S. citizens for national security purposes, the political power of APAC, and the regulation of light bulbs and toilets in people's homes. For Ron Paul, the list of grievances is long, and he might not have accomplished much in Congress. Now, see, they're switching it all up. This is something he said at the very beginning of his speech. In many ways, according to conventional wisdom, my off-and-on career in Congress from 1976 to 2012 accomplished very little, he said. No named legislation, no named federal buildings or highways, thank goodness. In spite of my efforts, the government has grown exponentially. Taxes remain excessive, and the prolific increase of incomprehensible regulations continues. Wars are constant and pursued without congressional declaration. In thinking about the champions of liberty, his lesson is a bitter one. History has shown that the masses have been quite receptive to the promises of authoritarians, which are rarely, if ever, fulfilled. But his prescription is hopeful. Paul left the podium for the last time, offering an answer to all of these problems. That people should choose liberty and limited government and seek change within themselves. The number one responsibility for each of us is to change ourselves with hope that others will follow, Paul said, urging an end to two motives that have hindered United States society, envy and intolerance. I have come to one firm conviction after these many years of trying to figure out the plain truth of things. The best chance for achieving peace and prosperity for the maximum number of people worldwide is to pursue the cause of liberty. If you find this to be a worthwhile message, Spread it throughout the land. Pretty powerful stuff from Dr. Ron Paul. Now, I did like how at the end he's saying, hey, you know, be the change that you want to be in the world. We cannot force our ideas on others. I've tried that before already, folks, and I know it doesn't work. People don't want to listen. But we know things are going to get worse. We know the dollar is destined to die. We know austerity measures are already being implemented and are going to continue to show up here. And all we can hope for is that as these things happen, more Americans like myself and like you, the listener, who woke up at some point in time, they're also going to hit that breaking point where they're going to start asking questions. They're going to start wondering. And as long as we have the Internet available to us, which they're working on that right now, so it's going to be a tough one, but as long as we have it available to us, they can find things like Orion Talk Radio. They can find things like The Sound of Freedom. They can find things like one of Popeye's YouTube channels. They can find things like the Sons of Liberty Academy, 1,776 PowerPoint slides, uh, 48 hours of of truth and information for free. And when they find things like that, the ideas have shifted and the revolution will continue. But we will not be able to solve it with more collectivist action. The short segment is over, folks. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the Daily Sheeple, Black Friday, and White House petitions all building up to secession and why it's a hoax. This is the Sound of Freedom, Orion Talk Radio. Don't go away. 